All right, guys, so now we're going to implement our smooth scrolling and we're going to have to use JavaScript with jQuery and I'll explain a little bit about that in a minute. But I just want to uh, show you guys something. I opened the site in Safari and with Safari, the the position sticky isn't doesn't work just yet. So the menu isn't isn't sticking to the top, which is fine. Uh, it's not like it breaks or anything. It just simply doesn't stick. But one thing I notice is this spacing right here. Uh, and to fix that, we actually want to go to whoops, want to go to our style CSS and go to our showcase content and where I have top. We actually want to change this to 65, which I put in the beginning, but it wasn't it was showing extra space down here because I forgot the bottom zero. So let's go ahead and save that and notice it still looks fine here. Everything is good. And if I bring Safari back in now, we don't have that spacing. OK, and this, you know, it still works, but it just doesn't stick to the top. So it's I mean, it doesn't hurt to use position sticky, even though it's not supported in some browsers. Uh, it just makes a better experience if you're on Chrome or uh, Firefox or browsers that do support it. OK, so now let's start. Let's let's get into the smooth scrolling now to use jQuery. Let's go to. Uh, jQuery.com. Now jQuery was used all the time years a couple years ago and it's starting to phase out for things like um, DOM DOM selection basically selecting things from the document object model which is basically the hierarchy of HTML tags and attributes and content in the browser. Now you can do all this stuff with vanilla JavaScript which is just regular JavaScript. Um, so there's a lot of things you don't need jQuery for that you used to. However animation is one that is kind of difficult to do in, in some situations. So things like sli uh, sliders and uh, scrolling effects and stuff. jQuery makes this stuff really easy. Um, so we're going to be using it for this this one feature. Now you could download the JavaScript. It's just basically a JavaScript file. You could download it. We're going to use what's called a CDN, uh, which we've actually been using with font awesome. If you look in our index HTML file, our font awesome CSS is coming from somewhere else, right? It's not it's not located in our local file here. It's coming from this use dot So we're going to do the same type of thing with jQuery. So I just need to find where we can get the CDN here uh, right here using jQuery with a CDN and, and it stands for content delivery network. Uh, so. Let's go Jake's right here. So jQuery CDN provided by stack path. Nope, that's not it. You know, why I can't find it is because. OK, so that's the fire. I usually just type in jQuery CDN. Yeah, so right here code.jquery.com and then there's different versions. We're going to choose the latest, which is jQuery 3. And one thing you don't want to do is choose the slim version. The reason for that is with the smooth scrolling, we're actually using the animate function or the animate method, and that's not included in the slim version. So you can choose the uncompressed, which is just the regular JavaScript file or minified, which means that all the white space is removed, all the comments, things like that. And it makes your file uh, a little it makes it a little faster because it's smaller. So we'll go ahead and choose the minified and then it's going to give us a script tag that has the jQuery CDN. So we can copy this. Or actually, you can just click this. That should copy it to your clipboard and then we'll go back into our index file, go down to the bottom. And we're going to paste this in above our main JS. In fact, I'm going to put a comment here and say this is our local JS file and this is Google Maps and then above the local we're going to put our jQuery CDN. OK, so we're just including the jQuery JavaScript file from somewhere else. Now it's important to put it above the main JS because we're using jQuery inside of this JavaScript file. If we put this below it, it's not going to know what we're talking about. 
okay so it's 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 important to use this order now we did use Google Maps inside the main JS but notice that in the script tag that Google gave us they use async defer so that makes it so that we can actually put it down here and we can still use it in this main JS so let's save this and let's go into our main JS and I'm going to just paste this in and this is our little code snippet for smooth scrolling so basically we're targeting the uh, nav bar any link that's inside the nav bar because if we look at our code here or uh, I'm sorry our markup our HTML we have our where is it uh, ID nav bar and we're targeting the link okay so if any link is clicked so we're saying on click which is an event then we run a function okay now this function we're checking for the hash because when we click this um, we're basically looking at these the hash and then whatever the ID is and then we're going to call the animate on the body on the HTML and body and we want to scroll from the top to that hash okay uh, and I mean you don't need to understand all this uh, but that's what it's doing it's going to basically do a smooth scroll and this is the speed at which it's going to do it so you can you can make this faster or slower it's in uh, milliseconds so 800 milliseconds um, and then we also want to do it with the class of button and the reason I put that there is because if we look at the showcase we have the read more and it goes to the what and it has a class of button so if we click that I also want that smooth scrolling implemented so I'm going to go ahead and save this our main JS is already being included so it should work so we'll go back here and say what and it scrolls us down and the reason that it's not covering the the title anymore is because I put this in here I basically said um, you know we want to scroll down to the ID and we want to minus 100 if I don't have this here So if we do that and we say what you can see it's still covering if I go to who it's still covering it. So adding that negative 100 pixels uh, that fixed it. So now we can actually see the titles. OK, so I mean, like I said, don't worry if that doesn't make sense. It's it's absolutely fine. Uh, I want to add one more th snippet of JavaScript so that when we start to scroll this nav bar has a little bit of opacity a little bit of um, uh, transparency so we can see through it right now it's completely solid but I only want to do it when we're no, when we're when we scroll down from the top so let me just add that in real quick so in main.js I'm going to put that right here and basically this isn't J, uh, jQuery this is just regular JavaScript um, adding an event to the window okay so in our in JavaScript you have a window object which is the whole browser and we're listening for a scroll and we're saying if the scroll Y position is greater than 150 basically if we're scrolled down more than 150 we're going to select the nav bar and we're going to set the opacity to 0.9 which will give it a slight transparency else if we're less than 150 so basically if it's up at the top then the opacity will be one it's it's not going to be and it's not going to be transparent at all so let's save that and notice it's not transparent but as soon as I go more than 150 down which is right you'll see it kick in right here see how now you can see through it if I go up you can't that's because we're hitting that 150 um, position and now as we scroll down we can see through it so as you can see you can do some really cool things with JavaScript uh, and even jQuery but we're not going to get into that uh, this course is about HTML and CSS but that's definitely the direction you want to go after this um, but let's t let's check it out in Safari while we're at it so let me just grab the URL here and yeah so it's just going to be you know stuck to the top which is fine uh, and then another thing I want to do is just get rid of the space in edge ledger. That should all be one word. So in the logo, let's uh, let's see. We have edge. Where's this? I think the space is right here. 
save that and yeah now it's all one word okay so i believe that the just the regular site is complete so we all we have to do now is the responsiveness which we have to deal with the menu because if we go too small you can see it can kind of mess up um, i just want the the logo on top have this centered and this we want these to stack we want this we want to get rid of the image and just have this um, clients i want these images to be a little bigger we're also going to get rid of the last one so there's only four and then we're going to put the map on the bottom of the contact also on wide screens i want the icon here to float or not float but we're going to use flexbox i want it to be aligned to the left as opposed to just being in the middle always okay uh, also on tablets if it's like this size i want it to i want it to stack Um, so that's all stuff that we'll have to do with the mobile.css and the widescreen.css. Okay, so hopefully you guys are, are enjoying this and you're able to follow along and things are making sense. If a couple things don't, don't worry about it. I mean, it happens. We're not going to understand every single thing the first time around. So, you know, it, it'll, it'll come to you in whether it's in this course in the future and in, in future projects and in sections or just creating your own projects and, and so on. All right. So that's it. I'll see you in the next video. Living life every day, late at night, not okay, all I want and I pray, all I need are some better days. Fuck me, I'm looking in the mirror, so foggy but I've never seen clearer.